So I'll start again by uh, just showing you the palette and the brush I'm using the large one Ranson Hake. And I've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, and light red. So it's just clean water, wet the paper all over. I haven't pre stretched this, you don't really need to. I can, I can, uh, I sort of stretch it as I'm painting. And then it's into raw sienna, just a very light coat of raw sienna from the top all the way down to the bottom. Don't do it evenly, just leave little bits of lighter areas here and there, just adds to the interest. So I'm just going to clean the brush and go into ultramarine, ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to come in from the side just brush that in again just leaving gaps here and there they're the, like the, the white clouds you can see and when I can see just slowly coming down just very very lightly so I'm not actually touching the paper at the moment and then just I'm just catching it just to take those drips off as they come down the page if you've put too much water on, you'll be getting loads of drips at this stage. Try using less water, more paint. And then just taking it away, where it gathers all at the bottom, like a big well. Just taking that as well. Just a very simple sky, but effective just using the two colours. I'm going to... No need to clean the brush. Because when you put it in the distant land you're using the same colours as the sky anyway so I'm just mixing again the raw sienna burnt umber just picking out where my horizon line is going to be it's normally about a third third of the way up and then just and also what I try and do don't paint over the same bit of paper more than once so you can see I'm not, I don't want to go over like that again I'm just, I'm just and you get these little gaps, these little lighter areas, and it just helps generate interest. And also you can see where the land sort of goes up and down and up and down and sort of not just left to right but from front to back. And then as it comes towards us, add a bit more strength to it, a bit more raw sienna. And you can see because I've used the same colours as the sky, the stronger tones in the foreground help push the that horizon line back even further. Now you can see where it is starting to just come down a bit so before it gets any worse I'm just gonna give it a quick dry. That's all it needs. Now you can see paper has stretched now so I'm just going to pull it tight refix it with these clips on the right hand side like I said you can pre-stretch it before but I, I don't see the point personally I find it a lot easier doing it this way so back to the sticking with the large ache And same colours, but then I'm just introducing a bit of lemon yellow. And then uh, there's just some really distant sort of hedges and stuff. So I'm just going to, just very, very lightly. And it, it just helps add a bit of interest in, into the, the, the sort of middle ground there. But obviously the, the lighter you do it, the, the smaller you do it, that help. The, the further away it looks and helps create a sense of depth so if you do these too big they'll look too close in the foreground and I want to do them a bit lower down so just raw sienna and then just really you can see the stronger tones now you're, you're really coming forward now and all this looks much further back now on this side I'm just going to stick a stick a big tree so I'm going Ultramarine, lemon yellow, 
and pines grey just to really sort of darken it up a bit and then I'm just going to use the corner of the brush just to make this tree and just bring that down and then in front of that I just want to change the colour a bit so it doesn't get all mixed in with the tree. I'm just getting raw sienna, maybe a touch of burnt umber, light red, ultramarine, just a bit that sort of darky colour. And the reason I want it dark is so that I can just get my fingernail then and just scrape in. I don't know if you can see this properly. I might use the, uh, if I use this you might be able to see it there. I'm just going to scrape in. No I'm not, so I'm going to use my finger. Preferably be one I haven't picked. And you can see. It's just a very simple way. You put in the cross pieces. A very easy way of doing a fence, so quite effective. Maybe even a few. A few little twigs and stuff in the tree. That wasn't quite as effective as I hoped. A bit of darker down there. I don't know what this is going to look like. Um, don't like that. Remember, if you don't like it, just paint straight over it. Paint over it and try again. Don't know if I like that either. So I don't know if I'm sort of doing overdosing on, on scraping out there. It's, it's, it's clashing with the um, with the fence posts. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. So I'll, I'll move on anyway before I get before I bore everyone to death. Raw sienna. So I've gone light there just to add a bit of contrast, and then just a bit of lemon yellow. Maybe a touch of light red just to really warm it up in the foreground. Burnt umber, light red, ultramarine. Back into the lemon yellow. I'm not cleaning the brush, just uh, get all these colours on the brush. Just makes this nice warm foreground colour. And then keep just constantly varying it. Don't do more than a two or three strokes without dipping into another colour. And it just helps create this really interesting foreground. What should I do next? I oh, know. I don't think I'm going to need the hike anymore. I don't know if you can pick that out, but where, the, where it's filled in, it almost... It looks not too bad now. You can actually see the trunk. It's filled in, so it, you can't see it very well, but it's, it's more of a subtle effect. Might be a better way to do it, actually. If you put it in, if you scrape it in while it's still too wet, which is how you wouldn't normally do it, but once it's filled in, it doesn't clash so much with the fence posts might look a little bit more effective but while this is still um, while that's still damp I'm just going to switch now to my little plastic card that I've cut up and then I'll be on the right hand side I may not even do it no I won't do it I'm going to do it here scraping a few rocks and so if I follow this line here it looks as if the, the sort of land's going down Yeah, and maybe a few. A little, a little bit further away these ones, so maybe a big, big one in the foreground. Maybe little ones over there. Obviously, you've only got until the paint dries to get those in. Um, 
and we'll switch to the number three rigger. Not too strong, plenty of water with this, and just take the excess off on a bit of bit of tissue, and then just just over it. Make sure I've got no paint on my hand. Just put a few birds in. Only very. Try and keep them subtle. I've done a bit. That's just slightly more than what I wanted. Maybe a. One over there somewhere. Give that a quick dry. Always keep an eye out on the bottom of the pipe where you get these wells of water piling up and then sometimes you'll get back rooms as they slowly seep back up the pipe. Huh? But you can see by helping, by getting a sense of depth and getting a nice colourful foreground even a simple composition like this can be quite pleasing. Switch to the number three rigger. Just any any sort of dark colour. All that's left now is pop my signature down here. Remember away from the corner so it doesn't get hidden by the mount when it's framed. And that's just a nice simple picture of uh, Dartmoor down in Devon on the south near the south coast in England. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. StephenCroning.com if you'd like to uh, buy this painting, you'll find it in my eBay store. And I'll see you again soon. Cheers.